Flashman collected a few keepsakes from his adventures over the years. In this packet, we'll be taking a look at my top five to own. Freshman, look! You're a coward and a bully and a toady and you smell. My little rat. Come on! Fair fight, Flashy, fair fight. Regular rules, unless you're afraid. Better do it, Flashy, and teach them a lesson. All right, you've asked for it. You get it. Before we start blowing the dust off Harry's souvenirs, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all you Flashman files out there who have subscribed and supported Flashman Study. It's been over a year now and we've just passed the 100 subscribers mark. I'd like to upload way more videos than I do, but it takes a lot of time to do the research, find the materials and produce the videos, and I try to be as accurate as I can. I really appreciate your patience and all the kind words of encouragement. So I just wanted to say, shabash! Anyway, let's get on with the video. Time! Picture the scene. You're on a day trip to Ashby de la Zouch, Leicestershire, in merry old England, and you're browsing up and down Market Street, and in amongst the shops selling scented candles and wooden signs with profound statements on, is a slightly dark and dusty curiosity shop. Something in the window catches your eye, so you venture inside. It's a quick good afternoon to the shopkeeper, and you're amongst the shelves and racks and boxes of lives gone past. Yellowing photos, old toys, china, furniture, and suitcases. The one suitcase in particular that you spied through the window is lit by a dust-filled sunbeam through the small windows, and on it is printed the name Sir Harry Paget Flashman, VC, KCB. Suddenly it hits you. You were indifferent on a day trip and it was the better half's idea to come. You never quite joined up the dots before that Gandamac Lodge wasn't far from Ashby de la Zouch and it was here that in 1966 at a sale room inside a tea chest wrapped in oilskins that the Flashman papers were discovered. What might be inside? Hand shaking, you remove a stack of dog-eared The Scots magazines balanced on top, lay the case on the floor and flick up the two latches and carefully open the lid. Covering the contents and sewn into the hinge side is a beautiful piece of silk patterned with fleur-de-lis. You lift the cloth to reveal. Well, what would you like it to be? I'm now going to offer up in reverse order my top five Flashman souvenirs that I would like to find in that case. We happy? Yeah, we happy. Number five, George Custer's Bulldog Repeater. In Flashman and the Tiger, Harry's granddaughter, Selina, is being blackmailed by Tiger Jack, a big game hunter and past acquaintance of Flashman. Selly, with nowhere else to turn, calls on her loving octogenarian grandfather for help. After failing to buy him off and discovering exactly why Tiger Jack is so bent on ruining Flashman's granddaughter, Harry drinks himself into a funk and decides to retreat to murder. He searches through a certain drawer to find the right weapon. And amongst the small collection is a British-made handgun, a bulldog repeater. He referred to this as the scarred double action bulldog repeater, which means it must have some importance to Harry. Fraser explains in the notes of the book that it was a gun such as this that George Custer gave Harry during the Battle of the Little Bighorn in Flashman and the Redskins to fight off the attack in Cheyenne. As usual, Harry has tried his damnedest to avoid trouble, but inevitably ends up in the wrong place and at the most wrong time. After making his escape from his Indian captors in the vast Indian encampment, he makes his way to Custer, who is just arriving. Harry, in full evening dress, is the one to break the news to Custer of the largest gathering of American natives to take the field against the white man, and that Custer is facing certain death. As the battle starts, Custer throws the gun to Harry, who takes a shot at an attacking brave, but couldn't confirm whether he hit him. Directly behind him, where the Indian once was, an injured Custer falls to his hands and knees after which Harry throws the gun at another attacking Indian, and it's here that the gun is lost to history. So as Flashman did somehow get reacquainted with this revolver to add to his keepsakes, it's a very important item. We could very well be looking at the gun that killed Custer at the Little Bighorn, and puts Harry right at the spot. Number four, the Orchid Lady's Tortoise Shell Concubine Tablet. In Flashman and the Dragon, Harry is in the soup once more, after being engaged by Lord Elgin as an intelligence officer. He survives a pirate attack on a steamer heading up the Yangtze and travels cross-country to Nanking with some Chinese bandits led by the beautiful, if a little aggressive, six-foot-six Zhu Shan, who Flashman tangles with in more than one way. He then spends a few weeks among the Taiping rebels where he is granted a rare audience with the Heavenly Father. 
Later, he is captured by the ruling Manchu army and taken to Peking and forced to kowtow to the emperor and repeat some carefully scripted lies to support the story the emperor has been told that the attacking barbarians are weak and are being defeated. He is locked in a furniture store and awaiting removal where he is found by the emperor's favourite concubine and future empress, Yi Honala, or Orchid Lady. She takes the usual flashman fancy to him and steals him away to satisfy her own curiosity of barbarian men, by which he narrowly escapes the Board of Punishment, where prisoners were tortured and executed by some truly gruesome methods. Harry is forced to bathe, be perfumed and then shave off his cavalry whiskers to be presented to Yi Honala in the Chamber of Divine Repose, the Emperor's Pavilion in the Summer Palace. It's here that he first sees on the table outside the scores of tortoiseshell tablets beautifully decorated with gemstones. These are used by the Emperor of China to select which concubine would service him that evening. After Flashman's escape and the Chinese capitulation, Flashy is back at the Emperor's pavilion amongst the destruction and marauding Western troops. Outside the chamber of divine repose, he finds the tablets scattered about and some broken. He never knew which was the orchid ladies, but he took one. After all the years, Elspeth used to keep her bedside teapot on it. I would really like to have that tablet, not only because it's a thing of beauty, but because it's a metaphor for the opulence that the country had to suffer. It also hosts the memories of the events that surround it. It will be one of the few remaining treasures cast to the winds from the Summer Palace. Number three, Harry's duelling pistols. Probably the first important event in the making of the reputation of Flash Harry is the duel he fights with Bernier in the first paper, Flashman. Flashman took an instant dislike to Bernier on joining the Hussars at Canterbury, and the feeling was mutual. After a few indirect insults over a period of time, Flashman decides to woo Bernier's lover, Josette. Inevitably, Bernier discovers them in bed and leaves without a word. Later, after some more taunting in the mess from Harry, Bernier punches him and presents Harry with a dilemma. Either he has to take the blow from Bernier and ruin his reputation in the army and society, or he has to fight the best shot and swordsman in the regiment. For me, it's times like this that separate Harry from the crowd. He buys himself some time by storming off, which gives him five minutes to hatch his plan. He returns and calls Bernier out for a duel, and as cool as a cucumber, continues to play cards for the rest of the evening, unconcerned with his early morning date and all the time adding to his reputation. After leaving the mess, he manages to bribe his associate Brian into ensuring Bernier's pistol has no ball. The next morning at the duel, Bernier is seen to have missed his shot and after a moment, Flashman purposely misses Bernier. His missed shot accidentally taking the top off the attending doctor's medicine bottle. With all those watching, believing this was Flashman's intended target. So Flashman manages to steal the girl, rub his adversary's nose in it, win a duel against the best shot in the regiment, which he then shows mercy to by performing a trick shot. And to top it all off, he welches on the £10,000 he promised Bryant which will come back to taunt him later. See Flash for Freedom. His response to Bernier's question of Why didn't you take your shot at me like a man? My good sir, I said, I didn't presume to tell you where to aim your shot. Don't tell me where I should have aimed mine. That remark, I'm told, has found its way since into some dictionary of quotations. It was in the Times within the week, and I was told that when the Duke of Wellington heard it, he observed, Damn good, and damn right too. Classic Flashman. After this, Harry's reputation grows. He is recognised in the street and is sent a pair of Barker pistols by parking the gun makers of Oxford Street. These guns in a presentation box with an inscription would really be something to find in that case. Number two, Harry's VC. If you're going to be known as the bravest soldier in the Victorian British Army, you're going to have to sport a Victoria Cross, the highest decoration you can receive in Britain for bravery. Bravery isn't not being scared, it's being scared and facing your fears anyway. And as cowardly as Harry certainly was, you can't deny he has been brave. Even though he shirked and avoided as much as possible, he actually was the first into the battery at Balaclava. He did stand fast with Campbell's thin red line, and he did go through the Indian mutiny, and at the end was nearly shot from the muzzle of a cannon. Historic VCs are among the prized possessions of museums, and they can go for a lot of money at auction. Vice Admiral Gordon Campbell's VC, awarded during the First World War, was sold at auction in 2017 for £840,000. General Flashman's fame and notoriety would surely mean that his VC would be highly sought after. Uncovering Harry's medal in that case would certainly be a lucky find. But could you part with it at auction? 
So here it is, my choice for the ultimate treasure to find in that damned case. A missing Flashman packet wrapped in an oilskin, written in Harry's own fair hand. We are only here because General Flashman in his final years decided to record his memoirs for posterity, finally deciding he no longer cared for his ill-deserved reputation and true to his sense of mischief, he reveals all his secrets and the impact he has had on historical events. Throughout the papers, he alludes to all sorts of other adventures. This further embellishes the character of this lucky rogue, enriches the stories with further authenticity and grabs the curiosity of the reader. In the real world, Macdonald Fraser must have built a healthy list of Flashman topics, some of which he sprinkled into the books that ended up as full packets, and others, well, they never made it. Just reviewing Harry's decorations gives us another clue as to where he has been and what he's been up to. For example, we don't know how Harry came to be at Isandwana to meet Tiger Jack, where 20,000 Zulus overwhelmed the invading British army, or why we find Harry in a hot air balloon above a battlefield in Paraguay, which gets his cable cut by a jealous husband. And probably the most eagerly anticipated historical event that Harry keeps bringing up is his time in the American Civil War. And it's this packet I'd like to find. In Flashman in the Angel of the Lord, Macdonald Fraser says that one of the most common questions he gets is when will the Civil War paper be released? He suggests he'd actually written the outline of the book. This subject is far too big to cover here and it deserves its own video, so I'll do a George MacDonald Fraser and say this one's in the making. Just as the Flashman papers were discovered by chance in a tea chest 50 years after Harry's passing, I would love it to be announced that amongst MacDonald Fraser's papers, a missing Flashman book was found. Life imitating art? So there you have it, my top five Flashman keepsakes to have for my very own. But what would you like to find in that case? Give us some ideas in the comments below and if you like what we do here at Flashman Study why not hit that subscribe button to keep you up to date on the latest. And if this paper has passed muster, how about a plucky thumbs up? Do you like nuts or cigar sir?